زور زور سپاسی همو برستان دکم بو آماده بون تانو بو دعوت کردنم بو هم کو بو نوایا سپانسی بغیزشتان دکم بو رخصاندنی هم در فتا Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for your attendance and for inviting me. And I would like to thank Kolak and the Washington Institute for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. Outnimen bu Washington la sar dawati kumati Amerika bua bua wai basi waza istay Iraq wu na uchakia wu paywandi harem wu bagda panduru drejib ki. So my visit to Washington came at invitation of the U.S. Uh, government in order to talk about the situation in Iraq, in the wider region, and also the relationship between Kurdistan region and Iraq in detail. Yesterday, during our meetings with the president, the vice president, and other officials of the U.S. administration, we have talked about all these issues in detail. بیگمان زور لبرنستان اگر دارن که ام وکو خالقی کردستان خوان مندا و قربانی کی زور مندا باوی عراقی کی دموکراتی فدرالی فرلان به تکایا. I'm sure many of you know that the people of Kurdistan have sacrificed a great deal and have shed a lot of blood for the sake of building a federal, democratic, and pluralistic Iraq. ولامم حقیقتا میشه لبر چهامانه اگر یارمتی آمریکا نباه تصحیحاتی ایوا نباه یا کروکچانی ایوا بتنها به ایما آغادفه تحقیق ندکش و اول جیما به ایما بتنها نداره. But we always are mindful of the fact that had it not been for the U.S. support and assistance, without the sacrifices of men and women in uniform and the sacrifices that have been made. This objective would not have been achieved, and the regime would not have been toppled. Tabi darfate ki zor zirin bu khal ki Iraq hota kaya wa bu awa Iraq ki demokrati federali federalan da mazrinen wa Iraq ki taza buniyad nen. So we got a golden opportunity in order to build a new Iraq, an Iraq that's federal, democratic, pluralistic, an Iraq that's new and better. و ابی معلوم بیتن که عراق چون پیکاتو و عراق لسه مکونی سرکی پیکاتو و کرد شیعه سنیه. And also to be clear that what's the composition of this Iraq? It's three main pillars that constitute Iraq: it's the Kurds, the Shias, and the Sunnis. و آن تویتریش هن لگال رئیس احترام بیان و ابی مافیان فارس رابی و کترکمانو کلدانو آشوریو سریانو حتی Having said that, we have to be mindful of the fact that we have other national minorities living with us, that they have to be respected, they have to be equally treated. We have got the Turkmen, the Chaldean, Assyrian, Syriac, and also an Armenian minority. Allah ma bi bzanin, asas ya Iraq la dun natawi sarake ipegde, agar waku natawa hamish Arabu kurt. But we also have to realize that uh, in terms of nationalities, Iraq is made of two main nationalities, Arabs and Kurds. Uh, I can say that in Kurdistan, we have an experience that to a great extent it has been a successful one. I cannot claim that this is an ideal uh, experience without any flaws or shortcomings, but I can say for sure that the security and stability situation is very good. Economic and commercial activities are good. Uh, socially, we have made a lot of progress. <laughs> In fact, we in the region have adopted a tolerant policy. We have not resorted to revenge and retaliation. We have opened a new page, and therefore we have been able to provide a safe and secure environment and to protect our people. 
And uh, for that, we are grateful to the support and assistance that we have got from our own people, but also thanks to the dedication of the security and law enforcement authorities. I am aware that the Zola Company is in the world. It is the only American that has been able to do it. It is the only one that has been able to do it. And that has the safe and secure environment has been the reason by inviting and attracting foreign companies. And lately, American oil companies also started to come towards the region and start their investment and other activities. When Chen Munek on the Kurti, the Hamer Barchoton, La Doi Koti Dozo Ruseka, Rajemi Koni, Iraq Ruha, the Ramadi Nafarek, La Kurdistan, to Soto Hafto, Pinch Dolorbo. Esther Pinches or Dolora, Tepari wash. I will give you some brief examples to show you the difference that we have made and the progress that we have made. After the fall of the regime in 2003, the GDP per capita income for individual in Kurdistan region was $275 uh, per annum, and now it exceeded $5,000. And also the uh, illiteracy rate, it was 56%. It has reduced or dropped to 16%. Uh, regarding other services, and namely electricity, we have been able to improve that sector. I can say that almost we have been able to provide electricity to all the cities and townships and the, uh, the rural areas. In certain areas, we have got 24-hour electricity. What has come to the Iraqi Treasury from 2000, 2003 until now, it has exceeded half, uh, for half of a trillion. Uh, you can check that information to see what kind of electricity has been provided in other parts of Iraq, which does not exceed three to four hours. There are one million people under arms, but still terrorism and the threat of terrorism continues. Iraq is facing a serious crisis today. Yesterday we have discussed that very frankly with the president and the vice president. And it's going towards one-man rule. It's going towards control over all the establishments of the state. So we have got a situation or we ended up having a situation in Baghdad when one individual is the prime minister and at the same time he is the commander in chief of the armed forces is the Minister of Defense, is the Minister of Interior, and the Chief of the Intelligence. And lately, he has sent a correspondence to the President of the Central Bank of Iraq that that establishment would also come under the Prime Minister. <laughs> Where in the world you would find such an example? We, as the people of Kurdistan, we believe that this government has come to being as a result of the blood that we have shed and as a result of the sacrifices we have contributed. We are eager to see the situation reformed. Therefore, we will not leave Baghdad for others. Well, so therefore we see the situation in Iraq that it requires to be ruled in partnership. 
for that the power sharing and partnership to consist of the Kurds and the Arabs, both the Shia Arabs, Sunni Arabs, and also with the respect and participation of the Turkmen and other minorities as well. The story Iraq is zor wazha. The story ki zor zor basha. Ema ema razin chun kya deng man buida wa ish man bui kirdo wa. Balam iltizami pe nakre wa aud the story ale merj bu manawi Iraq be ek parchei iltizam kirdo na bam the story ke istar ujana kharak nakre. And the constitution of Iraq is very clear and obvious. It's a good constitution. We approve and are committed to this constitution because we voted for that and we worked for, uh, for it. Uh, and it states very clearly that commitment to this constitution uh, is a condition for Iraq to remain united. But the problem is that this constitution is not being adhered to today. So on daily basis, we see that there is breach and violation to the constitutional articles. Yes, I was told that Iraq is a war in Iraq, and I was told that the government of Iraq is a war in Iraq, and it was 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 a war in Iraq. As a result of the situation that we have, and as a result of the crisis that we face, I have called upon all the Iraqi <coughs> political parties and groups to get together <coughs> sorry, and find a solution for this situation so that we all work together not to allow and also to prevent dictatorship to re-emerge re in the country. <coughs> And also to make sure that the Erbil agreements that we were able to reach in November 2010, on the basis of which the government was formed to be implemented on the ground. So. If we were able to address the problems and solve them, that's the most preferred option. Otherwise, the current status quo in Baghdad is in no way our option, and we will not accept that as an option. Thank you. Otherwise, we would be obliged to go back to the people for the people to make their decision. Therefore, after my return from Washington, we will start seriously working with the other Iraqi groups in order to do our best to try solve this problem. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for that very strong statement about Iraq. I am going to uh, take the prerogative of the chair for once and ask the first question and then turn to you, the audience. And I understand that you are prepared to talk about foreign policy issues as well as internal Iraqi issues. But let me start with your, the subject that you broached the situation in Iraq. I was going to ask you about U.S.-Kurdish cooperation in toppling another dictator in Damascus, but it sounded to me from your remarks that you were looking for U.S. help in dealing with Iraq's own internal movement, as you see it, in the direction of autocracy rather than democracy. Can you tell us something about what specifically you would like the United States to do, if anything, about Iraq's internal political crisis and what your meetings here in Washington in the last two days provided in that respect? Thank you. Thank you. 
بگمان من آمادم اگر بزانم غلامی هر پرسیاری گل سهر هر بابت As far as questions are concerned, I would like to assure you that if I know the answers, I will be at your disposal to, you can make any question on any subject. بایدن تأکید یان کرده و که اوان پابندن با عراقه که دیموکراتی فدرالی فرلایانی و پابندن با حریم کردستان و خلق کردستان و دستگوتکان کردستان که اما بو اما طبعا زور زور هلویسته که دلخوش کرد اوان لگل اوان که وضعکه چاره سر بکره با پی دستور و امش لگل اوان که با پی دستور وضع عراق چهار سر که اینو حولی شده این به پی دستور وضع عراق چهار سر که این بلا هم اگر چهار سر نکرا هم وضع استا و که گوتم هم خیاره خیاری ایمنیه و قبول قبول نیه از فر از وی ار کنسرن و اور پیپل ار کنسرن وی وانتد بری مچ تو نو هاو دز دی ایناید ستیتز لوک ات ایراک and Kurdistan region and how does the United States see the situation in Iraq today. Yesterday in my meetings with President Obama, Vice President Biden, it was reassuring to hear their uh, commitment, commitment to a federal democratic pluralistic Iraq and also their commitment to Kurdistan region, to the people of Kurdistan and also to the achievements that have been made in Kurdistan. This was a very encouraging position for us to hear and for the commitment to be reiterated and also Uh, they have shown their uh, commitment to solve the problems in Iraq in accordance with the Constitution. This is, of course, something that we also want to solve the problems in Iraq within the framework of the Constitution. If we were able to solve them in accordance with the Constitution, as I said earlier, this is our most preferred option. If not, the current situation and the status quo is not an option for us. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn the floor over to you for your questions, and uh, let me start with Nazar Janabi over here. Thank you. Please use the microphone if you if you've got one. Mr. President, thank you so much for uh, for coming and. My question uh, is that we are uh, noticing these days uh, a movement by uh, multiple uh, parties in, uh, who are uh, trying to, it seems like a coordinated <laughs> effort. Uh, uh, yourself are in D.C. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nachervan Barzani is visiting Iran. Dr. Yad Alawi is visiting Turkey. Uh, Mr. Tarek Hashimi is visiting Qatar and Saudi Arabia. Uh, since you mentioned that it's, uh, is it going to be like a coordinated effort, be effort between parties that want to maintain Iraq's democracy? Uh, and how far are you willing to take that effort uh, in, in not keeping the current status quo? Thank you so much, sir. ترجمة <تصفيق> تقرين ودات بجهود ده كان آيات ذكري إما أو ببين وكو بشكل لجهود ده كي وترسيح لسا ده كان أمولا أنا كان بو فارستان الديمقراطية العراقي وإي وش خود تان تان حاضر بوي أو جهود دان زيادة بسفير بو أمو بستا بالتأكيد خوي أبي عراقي كان خوان 
گرفتکانی خوان چاره صرف کن او وقت دوستکانی اتوانن یارمتیان بدن بلا هم اگر بگرین به دوی ودا لدره و چاره صرف و کشه خوان دوزنه و تمامون چاره صرف کشه کنی و ناکن Of course, we have to be mindful of the fact that the Iraqis themselves have to find solutions for the problems. When they try to find solutions for themselves, then their friends in the international community can help. But if they wait for others, for the outsiders to help solve their problems, they will wait forever and they will not see solutions. They have to do it themselves. <laughs> بیرو را از گور بکردن بلام نک به اون نیتی که اوان بین دست خنن و مسئولی اوان بین رجاتی حراقی کن مشکل کن چاره صرف کن هم سردانانه طبیعی بلام حق سردانی من ایچ رابطه که باوشتانی ترونی با سردانانه ایتر It's, it's very natural to have relations with the neighboring countries and also with, with the international committee but also specifically with the neighboring countries in order to exchange views and also to exchange ideas about this, but not to give them an opportunity to interfere in the internal affairs of Iraq or for them to come to solve the problems or for them to act on, on, the, on behalf of the Iraqi people. The Iraqis have to do it themselves, but uh, my visit has nothing to do with the other visit. It was separate. Thank you. I'm going to take... Uh questions in the order in which I see them. So let me go to Barbara Slavin over here. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Slavin from almonitor.com and from the Atlantic Council. Mr. President, very nice to see you in Washington again. I want to clarify what you said earlier. Are you saying that you will go to the Kurdish people and have them vote on separating from Iraq if this situation cannot be resolved? And is there, is there some timeline on this? Also, the question of oil. Are you not going to be providing oil revenues and exporting oil as long as this stalemate continues? Thank you. اما شش ساله هر چواروانی وعودی هر جالج به بهانه های انتخابات الله بغداد های انتخابات الله هریم های انتخابات الله امریکا های ام کنگره سران عربه که تماشا مان کرد شش سال من بری به وعودی به انجام لبره و براستی اما کراوانی وقت بی سقفه که زمانی محددی بودا بنره و ابی جبه جب بکره اما ماندی بوین لوعود و لقصه کردن اما حقایق که خیلی بردمی ملتی کرد ایتر خوی بریال بداد اما یک دو هم بنسبتی نوت لسال دو هزار و حوت اما اتفاق مان کرد لسر پروژه قانونی نوت و غاز که بچی بو پرلمان اگر تا مانگی پینج او قانون در باز نبول پارلمان هر دولا یعنی ام و کوهرم کردستان و حکومت ایبادا آزادن لا امضا کردنی گری بس لگال کمپانی کانیتر ام یک شتیش ما نکرد و خلافی دستور هر چی عقود امضا من کرد گری بس تکان هموی به پی او اتفاقا به پی دستور بود که دستور او حقی به ما داد اما ایتر پیشی تقریبا 4 مانک 5 مانک وفدی کی ام چون بو بغداد لگال وزیری نوت ری کوتن که پاره او شریکانه بدن تا است پاره او کمپانیانه نداوه بوی او نفت را گیره و نکل بر هیچ خلاف سیاسی ها هیچ مبسته گیتر هر وقتی پاره او کمپانیانه بدن نفته که در وقت We have been waiting for the last six years for promises that were not delivered for agreements that were not honored we have waited and every time they give us an excuse 
Once they say there are elections in Baghdad, another time elections in the region. Once there is the election in the United States, then the, there is the Arab summit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have found out that we have passed three, six years waiting for these promises to be delivered. We cannot anymore wait for unfulfilled promises and undelivered promises. There has to be a specific and a certain timeline for this to be delivered. We got tired of this, and we are uh, we are fed up with that. Therefore, what we will do is that we will work on the preferred option to work with the other Iraqi groups to find a solution. If not, then we go back to our people and to put all these realities in front of the people for the people to be free to make their own decision. As far as the, uh, the issue of the oil is concerned, in 2007, we were, when we were working and we reached an agreement on a draft oil or hydrocarbons law, we both agreed that if that law was, did not pass in the parliament until May that same year, that both sides, the KRG and the federal government, are free to continue signing contracts with international oil companies. Therefore, whatever we have done in the region, we have not violated the Constitution. We have acted constitutionally and legally within the framework of the Constitution. Adding to that, four months ago, a number of delegations went from the region to Baghdad. And uh, when the delegation from the region went, they have had meetings with the government officials, and specifically when they agreed with the Minister of Oil and the Minister of Finance for the uh, expenses of the foreign oil companies to be given. So we have been waiting for that. That has not been coming through. Therefore, the oil has been halted or stopped because of that and for no other political reasons. The moment they pay the expenses for the companies, the oil will resume. Thank you. Next on my list, by coincidence, was Jim Fleck. I think you may have an oil question, but maybe that was answered. Okay. Uh, the next person over there. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, as Jihad Saleh, Kurdistan, Syria. Persam Shta Amzan, Kurdistan, Syria, Mlate, Kurdistan, Hividaren, no Hukumata, Kurdistan, Arikari, Guaravike, U Shekleki Has, Majdus Lotani, Le Kurdi, Chinarina Tayaj, Bo, Mustakvali Kurda, Pishti, Go Bashar Asad, Bekhwar, Ujbo, Herkese, Narab, Wak Fulaha, Wak Dirzia, Wak Alawia, Am Hividaren, no Arikari, Habe, U Chinarina, Servit Kispas. The question from uh, Mr. Jihad from Syria that was regarding the situation in Syria and Kurdistan of Syria, and what kind of assistance the Kurdistan regional government would be providing to the Syrian National, uh, Syrian Kurdish National Council in Syria, and also how do you see the future of uh, Syria and the Kurds in Syria after the fall of the Assad regime, and also the future for. Uh, the Muslims, the Christians, the Druze, and all the other components of that, they wanted to know President Barzani's views regarding this issue, uh, as far as I got the questions. روشاوا و یک قیاد عربی و یک خطاب حبی تمام به دو باش بکن گراتا گردان و قیادا خو حل بجارتن و بونا خویه یک خطاب سوات آمان زور گرنگه بو آینده کاده مافی براین مل کردستان و سوریا به چواب دست بین طبیب ما حتانا ها نه حکومتانا ها نه معارضه تشتک کنکریت و نیه بو کرده او دی بوات ترک بیس چوا مفاوضات افغان گنا چه حلول او گنا چه حل کی امت پشتیبانی وان بکین بس به گمان نسبت ما مهمه ام حاضرین بو پشتیبانی وان بس طبیعی پشتیبانی نه معنا و عسکری یا سلاح و تشتیوانه بس پشتیبانی معنوی سیاسی مادی همه هم دی بو کین و نفوذ خو ز بکارینین بو اند گنا حل کو تو اتفاق کد گ معارضه بو مستقبل کردای مضمون بی و نسبت ما زور زور مهمه حکومت دهات سوریا حکومت که اطلافی دموکراتی بی کو ماف کرده و همه اویندیش تأمین کرد. 
A couple of months ago in Erbil, we hold a conference for our brothers in uh, the Syrian and the Western Kurdistan. I, our aim was in order to have to have all the Syrian Kurds elect a leadership and also come up with a united, a unified statement. So it was good. As a result of the conference, they were able to elect a leadership and come up with a clear vision and statement for their future. Of course, uh, it's uh, very important for us uh, that there would be a clear future for them. But what we see right now, neither the uh, current government nor the, the opposition have anything concrete to provide for the, the Kurdish people. So, but that issue is left to them. So wh whichever way they would conduct their negotiations, we, are, we will support the, the result or the outcome of their negotiations. Of course, it's important to highlight that we are ready to support them, but not military support or providing ammunition. It would be a moral support, political support, financial support, and we will use our influence in order to help solve their problems. But, uh, of course, uh, it would be good for them to be involved in talks and negotiations so that they can reach an agreement with the other groups of the opposition. But with that, the future of the Kurds in Syria is very important for us and for their future to be secured. And it's important to make sure that this future government in Syria would be a democratic coalition government that respects the rights of the Kurds and all the other uh, citizens of Syria. Thank you. Um, I might mention that, if, if you'll permit me, that Mr. Jihad Saleh is one of the contributors to Fikra Forum, our blog on this issue. And I encourage you to follow this discussion further on this blog that you can find on the Washington Institute's website. Yes, over there in the back. And then I'll get to you, Carol. Yeah. Saeed, yeah. Thank you, David. Uh, welcome, Your Excellency, Mr. Turn, President. Turn on the mic, please. Can you hear me? Welcome, uh, Mr. President. سؤالي لسيادتك يخص المادة 140. ما رأيك وضع المادة 140 وما هو مستقبلها؟ وكذلك بالنسبة لاتفاق البيل. My question is about Article 140 and the future of their bill agreement. Thank you. المادة 140 هي مادة دستورية و. نتيجة مناقشات ومباحثات طويلة إلى أن توصلنا إلى هذه المادة وهي الطريق الصحيح لحل مشكلة الأراضي المستقطعة من كردستان الحقيقة أنا لا أقول المتنازع عليها لأنه بالنسبة لنا لا نزاع عليها ولا, ولا شائبة في أنها تعود إلى كردستان لكننا أبدينا أقصى درجات المرونة لكي تعود هذه المناطق إلى كردستان بحسب مادة دستورية وبطريقة قانونية لكن هناك تهرب كما قلت من ست سنوات التهرب من تنفيذ هذه المادة وحل أو تنفيذ هذه المادة هو من مصلحة العراق وتخدم مستقبل العراق الزمن لا يمكن أن ينسينا هذه المادة هذه يجب أن تطبق وهذه أراضي كردية كردستانية مستقطعة يجب أن تعود إلى أراضي كردستان ونتيجة نعود إلى استفتاء المواطنين في هذه المناطق إذا المواطنين قرروا أن لا يعودوا إلى أقليم كردستان فهذه عندئذ سنتخلص من المسؤولية التاريخية لكن القرار هو بيد أبناء المنطقة فليجري الاستفتاء وعندئذ يكون واضح من يريد أن يعود ومن لا يريد ممكن السؤال الشق الثاني السؤال ما فهمت أنا. اتفاق أربيل مو فقط تشكيل الحكومة والبرلمان والرئاسة. اتفاق أربيل هي مجموعة اتفاقات منها تثبيت الشراكة الحقيقية، الالتزام بالدستور. والفدرالية إعادة التوازن إلى مؤسسات الدولة وخاصة القوات المسلحة وقوى الأمن الداخلي قانون النفط والغاز المادة 140 موضوع البيشمرقة 
كل هذه المسائل هي ضمن اتفاق اربيل ولو طبقت لما كان العراق الان في الوضع اللي هو الان فيه واذا لم تطبق اتفاقيه اربيل اعتقد المشاكل واضحه العراق سيواجه مشاكل حقيقيه Article 140 is a constitutional article. It needed a lot of discussions and talks until we have reached this. Uh, this is the best way to solve this problem. It's regarding solving the problems of the territories that have been detached from Kurdistan region. In fact, I do not want to call it disputed areas because we do not have any dispute on that. For us, it's very clear there is any flow for that. But we have shown utmost flexibility in order to find the legal and the constitutional solution for this problem. And uh, in order to pave the way for the return of these areas, according to the Constitution and the, on the basis of law and legally to the Kurdistan region. But we have found uh, that there is an effort to evade and run away from responsibility for the last six years in implementing this constitutional article. And I want to assure you that implementing this constitutional article is in the interest of Iraq and in the interest of stability. If there are people who think that time would make us forget about this, they're wrong. Time would not help forget or solve the problem. These are Kurdish territories, part of Kurdistan region, and it has to return to Kurdistan based on the mechanism that has been stipulated in the Constitution. And at the end of the day, as the Constitution stipulates, it's going back to what the people want to determine. So it's the referendum for the people of these areas, and they will decide when the people, if the people decide to join Kurdistan region, they are welcome. And if the people decide not to, at that time, we will not have any responsibility on our shoulders. So people would be held responsible for their own dis decision. As far as the second section of your question, the Erbil agreement, in fact, the agreement was not only for the sake of forming the government and forming the three presidencies, the presidency, the speakership of the parliament, and premiership. In fact, it was a package, a package that included a number of essential items. First, to, uh, to put in place a genuine partnership in the country. Second, commitment to the constitution and its implementation. The issue of federalism, uh, the return of balance of power and special in all the state institutions and establishment, and namely in the armed forces and in the security forces, the issue of the hydrocarbons law, the Article 140 of the Constitution, the status of the Peshmerga, these were all part of the package that have been there. Had this Erbil agreement been implemented, we would not have faced the situation that we are in today. Therefore, if we do not implement the Erbil agreement, then there would be certainly problems in Iraq. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Josh Rogan, Foreign Policy Magazine. Uh, Mr. President, uh, last month, President Obama nominated Brett McGurk to be the next U.S. ambassador to Iraq. Uh, one day later, former President Alawi stated that he would not work with Ambassador McGurk. Uh, he stated several concerns about uh, Brett McGurk's cl perceived closeness to Prime Minister Maliki. I'm wondering, do you share those concerns? Thank you. اگر علاوی پرسیمونی کرد با پیم اگو او تصیح همه ده حقیقت اما سفیر امریکای او سیازت دی امریکا بجید بگینی Had Alawi consulted with me, I would have told him not to give such a statement or issue such a statement, because he has been nominated as the ambassador of the United States to Iraq, and he would implement the U.S. policy in Iraq. Thank you. I had Carol McDonald uh, on the list. Please, Carol, over there. Can we get a microphone? Right there. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, it's been reported that the Turkish government has a new strategy to deal with its Kurdish problem, and that part of that strategy may be to have you play a more prominent role in solving its Kurdish problem. 
Could you tell us something about your relationships with the PKK and what role you're prepared to play in helping Turkey resolve its Kurdish situation? Thank you. في الصالك برئيس أردوغان هات هولير وعلى خطابك على نيدا تيار رجاك إنكاري هبوني كردك راو رجاء نما بالنسبة لي ما ما عن جوابك زور زور جوربو وزورج جرينجبو بيجمان جورانك جوربو سر وضع تركيا دعوتو وإما هميشة قلتو ما أنا كشيء كرد لتركيا يا لهر شو نكتر أبي باوشتي شارع سر بكري نكرد بشر تواو دبي نكرد بشر إجدتواني هدفي خوي جيبا جيبكا لوا زياتر كخويني كي زياتر درجة لما زياتر نوبي وإما متاسفين ودلقرانين بورشتني خويني هر قطر خويني كي چه كرد بي چه عربي بي چه فارس ريج تركيك إما وكو ملت وكو نتوا أما برايي كينو جيراني كينو أبي بيك يوا بشي لبرا و اما هر چی لدسمان به ایکه این بویارمتی دولتی ترکیا بویارمتی پگکش بو اوی چاره سره که آشتیانه بدو زینه و طبی پگکش اما فشاری بودینین داوی لدکه این نابی پنا بو شر و چک و امانه بباد اگر پنای بو چاره سری آشتی اینا طبی اما هر چی پیمان بکره یارمتی هده این اگر خیاری شر حل بجارد رگه اما اوان لگ جاده بید Last year, uh, Turkish Prime Minister Mr. Erdogan visited Dazner Bil in, in a public statement. He clearly stated that the days for the denial of the Kurdish people is over. So the denial of Kurdish people is over. Therefore, we, we welcome that, and that was a very important and great step. There is no doubt that great changes have taken place in Turkey. But for the Kurdish question, whether in Turkey or in other places, it cannot be solved through violence. So neither the Kurds would be able to to achieve their objectives through violence, nor the Kurds would be annihilated through violence. Therefore, the only way to solve the problem is through peaceful means, because the continuity of this situation would only lead to more bloodshed. And we are sorry for any drop of blood that would be shed, whether it's the blood of a Kurd, of a Turk, of an Arab, of a Persian, because we as nations and people, as we are brothers and we are neighbors, we want to live together and peacefully. Therefore, if anything is needed to help Turkey and also PKK to solve this problem peacefully, we are ready to do that. We will continue our efforts and we will exert pressure and also call upon the PKK not to resort to violence or to weapons in order to solve the problems. If they chose a peaceful approach, then we will help in order to, to help solve the problem. But if they choose war or fighting, then we would be going to a different directions. Thank you. Uh, yes, way in the back there. Mr. President, I was wondering if you were concerned about the growing strength of the security forces under the control of the Iraqi Prime Minister, and whether there's anything you feel that you can do to balance that growing strength. آن مافیه می‌آیند نگران بین چون که پیوست جیش عراقی با شیوهک درست بکری تا و که جیشی ولاد بین نک جیشی شخصیک و ما مثلا شخصی نیا نابی سپای عراق سر به یک نفر بی و با کیفی خوی آمری پی بده بی با پی دستور بی با پی قوانین بی و ناج بی به شیوهک جیشی عراقی دست خطرناک کاروباری نخوی ولاد بالام 
است من دیجی او فرهنگم او فرهنگی که جیش عراقی پدروز دکریت و که ولای بویک شخص بی است وایا بله امام اولی که دین که و کوچکتر لایت فقیه اولی ریش گران نوای ها سنجی بو هزی چقدری عراق اما یک کل خاله هر هر اساس کیان بدی سمتیم. Of course, it's our right to be concerned about the situation. The new Iraqi army needs to be built on the basis of being the army of the country, not an army of an individual. So to be an army that belongs to the peoples of Iraq and to the state of Iraq, in accordance with the constitution and with laws. And also the Iraqi army should not interfere in the internal political differences of the country. This is the culture, this is the mentality and way of thinking that I'm against because we want the Iraqi army to be loyal to Iraqi people as a whole and not to be loyal to one individual or one man. Uh, therefore, as I said earlier, we will try in order to make sure that the Erbil agreements will be implemented. And one of the most important points is that, as I mentioned earlier, is the return of balance to the state establishment and namely to the armed forces. Thank you. Uh, there's a question up front from Mike Knights, right over here. Thanks very much. Um, Mr. President, thank you for coming and thank you for all the hospitality you've shown, uh, particularly to the Washington Institute when we visited your beautiful region. Um, I wanted to ask a related question, which is uh, when U.S. forces were removed from northern Iraq, the combined security mechanism, there was a concern that there would be an increased chance of accidental clashes along the uh, Kurdish federal line, particularly in Kirkuk, in Nineveh, northern Diyala. Do you think that there's an increased risk now of clashes breaking out along that line? Is there anything being done to reduce the risk of a, an accidental clash? So we will do whatever we can to prevent a war from happening. Because this is the worst case scenario is to have confrontation in these areas. Therefore, our main priority will be to make sure that the Constitution is implemented and Article 140 of the Constitution is implemented. But if it's not implemented, then sooner or later we will have to face that reality. Thanks. Uh, I think there was a question up front, right over here. Thank you. Hi, Mr. President. Emily Cadet with Congressional Quarterly. Um, you mentioned earlier that you were heartened to hear the U.S. commitment to Iraq, and I was curious if you could assess for us how much influence you think the U.S. maintains over various factions in the country, uh, particularly the uh, Prime Minister, and if you've seen any diminishment since the withdrawal of combat troops. فوزی آمریکا بن نیا با حبونی هزی آمریکا یا خود چند هزی آمریکا ل ل عراق یا لارش ونی. آنهاستی هزی آمریکا ل درجه التزامی آمریکا ده به هر مسئله. اگر آمریکا 
با کو سر کو با ما دوباره تاکیدی کرده و جگرکی دوباره تاکیدی هم کرده و اون التزام خوان دوباره کرده و باز عراق باز حریم کردستان به خلک کردستان خبر و اگر بیا نوی اره والله تاثیر اون هست به همون شو نه so the influence of the united states is not tied to the presence of us troops in iraq or other elsewhere uh, the strength and the influence of the United States is in the degree of its commitment to the commitments that the United States shows. And what I have heard the President of the United States, the Vice President, reiterating their commitment to Iraq, to Kurdistan region, to the people of Kurdistan, this is what's important. Therefore, so uh, be it that way, certainly the United States has influence. Thank you. I, I'm going to jump in here with a question of my own, if I may, because it's the rare Washington Institute seminar where somebody doesn't ask something about Iran. And I wanted to ask you, Mr. President, you've been very patient with us, uh, answering all kinds of questions about very difficult and sensitive subjects. Can you say something about Iranian influence in the Kurdistan region of Iraq and about your government's attitude toward Iranian issues, and in particular toward the enforcement of economic sanctions against Iran. Thank you. Iran is a هیچ گروه گرفت تک نبی بلا معنی و نیه مالا موش تک متفقین لگل ایران لانده شد طبعا بر جوانده ایکی زوریش مانه یا تک او چونکه هاوس جیرانی ایمان دراوسه ایمان لانده شد تیما خلاف مانه یا لانده شد ایش متفقین من با صراحت بریم ایما دوی اوی که ام همو قربانیانه من داوا و کو خلق کردستان اما ابی خومان برگاری خومان دین و آزاد بین نه ایران و نه هیچ ولاده که تر لجیاتی ملتی اما برگار بو اما ناتد اما من با واضحی ایلیم با نسبت عقوبات اما ملتزمین با برگارتانی مجلسی امن و ممکنی اما خرقی یک برگاری مجلسی امن که ایران is an important country in the area we would like to have normal relations and not to have any problems with Iran. But that doesn't mean that we agree on everything. Of course, we have shared interests because we have we share borders and we are neighbors. But of course, uh, there are issues that we disagree and there are issues that we agree. I have stated my position very clearly in the past and I would like to state it again, that after all the sacrifices that our people have given, so we want our people to make their own decision, neither Iran nor any other country to make a decision on behalf of our people. So this is a clear-cut position of the Kurdish people and of the leadership. As far as the second part of the question, we are committed to the UN Security Council resolutions, and in no way we will violate or breach any resolution. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. Way up front. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Gary Gentile from Platts. Um, I read that um, you're thinking of building a pipeline to ship your oil uh, through Turkey and wondering uh, how serious uh, these plans are uh, if you intend to uh, to to build this pipeline, uh, if so, when you might make that decision, and if that decision depends on whether uh, the dispute that you have with the Baghdad government over payment is resolved, or whether you will make that decision 
independently. Thank you. كم يوتي كزولي نوت دوزروتو ولا كردستان وإما فابندين بالدستور كان نوت غاص ملكي مملة عراق ووالدات شبه مخلك عراق وما بو باش كردني وضع عبوري هم عراق حقد نكر تنوب كردستان شوك عبوري يستاهى بتنوب بشيا ونوك أو همون يختبر بار ويستاهى لا قفتو بودا لنوان وزيري نوت سامان سروشتي كان لعلم كردستان لقال أو تاكي إلى تركيا أو لقال بغداش وما هيش علاقة بو أزمي استنية كا في وسطان دني نو تامان A good amount of oil was found in Kurdistan and I would like also to reiterate our commitment to the constitution regarding this issue that oil and gas belong to all the peoples of Iraq and also the revenue should be shared among the Iraqi people of course, when we talk about the oil, it's to improve the economic situation of all of Iraq. We are not talking only about Kurdistan. But the pipeline that exists now is not enough, is not sufficient for the amount of oil that will be produced. Therefore, now there are talks to the Ministry of Natural Resources in the region and its counterpart in Turkey, as well as Baghdad, in order to work on this issue. But it has nothing to do with the current uh, dispute that's there on the payment. Thank you. Yes, sir. Steve Feinberg, Department of State. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for your visit today. Um, you've talked a, a little bit about um, your assessment of the Prime Minister's uh, uh, performance. I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit, a little bit more about uh, uh, assessing the performance thus far of uh, the Speaker of Parliament, Osama Al Nujafi. And on a related second question, um, how do you assess right now uh, the KRG's relations with neighboring Nineveh province? Thank you. لا همون من که مکری من هیا خو اونیار بله هر مالکی یعنی بله نجفی هیچ دسالاتی کی تنفیزی نیه همون دسالات همون لای مالکی دسالات لای کی بگی لای لود اکری و موضوع شخصی نیه و نسبت نی نوا است پیوندی من باشه او لیستی کردستانی گران و پیکاتن لگر لیستی حدبال است مجلسی محافظه مصر هم کرد و هم عرب پیک وان لوی ترکمانی تدا مسیحی تدا و پی مو هیچ مشکلی نمو است بینی هریمو بینی نینو none of us is flawless all of us have got our flaws and shortcomings here there but uh, uh, when we have mentioned maliki point is that he has got the authorities they got the power no jefi doesn't have executive power that's why uh, we've mentioned it's Whoever gets the power, he would be getting the complaint and to, to blame. Therefore, it's not a personal issue. It's about the power that they exercise. As far as, uh, in fact, uh, in addition to what the Constitution has entitled him to, he has got 10 more times power and grabbed all that power. But vis-a-vis uh, -vis the second section of the question about the relations with Ninawa, we have now good relations, and the uh, fraternity list has gone back to the provincial council, and as a result of the agreement that they had with uh, Hadba list, now the provincial council is 
uh, functioning and the Kurds and Arabs and Turkmen and the uh, Christians all, and uh, they're all working together. Therefore, there are no problems between Kurdistan region and Nineveh. And also regarding the oil issues, the KRG wants the Nineveh Provincial Council and also the governor to be involved in anything related to the oil. Thank you. Uh, with the President's permission, we have time for just two more questions. Okay. If that, okay? And so I apologize in advance to those of you that I may not get to. I'm going to take that gentleman in the back, uh, if we could get a microphone over there. And then uh, you, sir, in, yes, will be the last question. Thank you. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for this. Uh, Tolga Tan is from Hurriyet, a Turkish daily. I had a two follow-ups, up, uh, follow ex actually. First of all, could you define the current situation, uh, current cooperation level with Turkey in terms of the PKK? I mean, it's obvious that you, you're going to not fight PKK members alongside Turkish army, but wha how about in terms of the handing over uh, PKK mem members arrested in KRG region and intelligence sharing? And the second, questions about, uh, second question about the uh, referendum that you mentioned uh, in terms of the statu quo. Uh, what will you put in front of the Kurdish people in this kind of referendum in the near future? And you, 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 you didn't mention about the timeline also. If you can clarify the time, timeline too, I appreciate it. Thank you. طبعاً هل بس تيم واضحة بتجربة كدولة درجيش بشر مسألة بيجك حل نوبي لبرة وأجر شو دولة تركيا وشو بيجك خياري أو شتيال بجيران هيك سقفك نيبوه وكاري إما أجر رجاي ترها البجيران إما تيداني زور بقى واضح بالنسبة أوي جران نوابو من التي خمان حق خمانة شو كه هيك رجاي ترنا مين لبرة دمي إما وآخر خیاری ایم دبی. طبعا نوخته پارلمانی ما قرار داد چه جوره پرسیاری که لخالکی ما بکند و قصیله دکن چه جوره پرسیاری بکن سقف زمانیش من به صراحت بود چاک کردنی وضع عراق مفتوح نیه سقف زمانی لایه ما معلومه بالا من نامه و است باسی که مگی نه هیچ مفتوح نیه و کوچاران من چهاروانی نکی. Regarding the first part of the question, our position is very clear, and also our long history and experience has shown us that through war and violence, this problem cannot be solved. The PKK problem cannot be solved. Whether the Turkish government or PKK, if they choose a peaceful approach, then there would be no limit for our cooperation and assistance that we can provide in order to help solve this problem peacefully. But if any side chooses a different road, a violence, then we will not be part of that process. As for the second part of the question, when we said we, we will go back to our people, this is our right. Uh, we do, we do, will not see and we do not see any other option apart from that. And this is the last resort option. But then it will be the parliament of Kurdistan would decide what kind of question would be put forward. Uh, because our patience and also the timeline for improving the situation, for remedying and solving the problems in Baghdad is not an open-ended. We have the timeline, but I don't want to disclose it here because we cannot continue going on waiting for the problems to be solved like before. Okay. Last question. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, 
Vice President uh, Al Hashimi sought refuge in Kurdistan. Kurdistan offered him uh, a place to stay and a safe passage uh, initially to Qatar and then to uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Um, this makes Kurdistan complicit uh, in triggering the harsh government response, the Iraqi government response that is uh, due to that act. Uh, was the move itself approved, condoned, uh, blessed by the Saudis? And a related question, uh, sir, uh, the Turkish incursions, uh, repeated incursions into northern Iraq, um, how does that impact your position on the fragile balance within the existing Iraqi government? Olan mesele Hashimi muşkileyi emniye fakat Hashimi istersh nayi bir rey cumhura idana nekrava ve ben ben basarahat bilem mesele Hashimi tesis kırava vakti kuzi ki o muşkile atapesh ben peşniyorum ki bu tüm her şey serukati legal seruki listi arafiyat donishin bariyar ek bedan canıb siyasiyeke bawi hamulagle ihraj derbici nekrava ta ista. Alın mesele ki kazaya, kama kaza, ama gevretirin muttaham, gevretirin mudan. Ve yek işaretle mektebi kaydı ağımı kuvvet musallaha. Abi te kabraya ki be günahı beri, kabraya ki beri şebi be mudan ve muttaham. Ama çi kaza ki, ben o tanıyım bir babam kaza ki. Ama yek, duham muşkuk bütün muşkileyi minya. Nahi bir reis cumhur ahatu ve bu ditini reis cumhur. Eğer muttahama bu la bağda heşti bet. Bu muşkile bu eme tazim be. يعني أو قضاء عراقي لا أو زور مهمة، أجل زور مهمة خويدة لدو صال بيشي يستم ملف في هاشمي لاي منا، باش أبو دو صال أو ملف في هاش تاو. يعني أو دياوي الدفاع على قضاء كاتن قضاء عراقي منيش بتشم كابرة داخل هاتو لاي من تسليمي في كمان. أجل هرس سلوكاتي قرار يندا تسليم بكري تسليم دكري در بكري در دكري تصفير بكري تصفير بكري. بلام بقسي مكتبي قائد عامو. أو قضايا لجر تأثيري أو مع علاقة بيدونيا نديجرم نداري ذا كم نمنع ذا كم خوي أزادة شو تدرى وبخوي شو بيت وج بخوي ذا تو بلا من رازينيم إيمة تكلاوي أو موضوع أبك شو كمشكلة إيمانية بلا تسليمين أبك أما يك دهام مثلا يا وع طبعا ما في من نخوشة جارو بارش أو قصف وما ندك تبغى حقيقة قصف كا أكثر الناس ما نوتش سنوية كنا بويش من الله ما بيش أشتي شارة سر بكرة شو كنا بفروكة شارة سر دكري ونبى أرپيجي شارة سر دكري أبي علاجك دوزي نوا Fact as far as the Hashimi case is concerned, it's not our problem as a Kurdish problem in Kurdistan region. He is still the vice president of Iraq. He has not been convicted. And in fact, honestly, this issue has been politicized. At the beginning of the crisis, I proposed that the three presidencies in Iraq, in addition to the chairman or the president of the Iraqi list, sit down together and make a decision on this political aspect of the problem, and so that everybody would be out of that embarrassment. And whatever decision the three leaderships would make, in addition to the Iraqi, we will accept it. They said, no, this is a, a judicial issue. What kind of judicial system we are talking about? A system that has turned the 
biggest culprit and convicted into a, in a innocent people with just a mere signal from the office of the commander in chief of the armed forces in Iraq and and uh, somebody very innocent to be turned to a huge criminal and a culprit. So we have lost confidence in the court system because of all the interferences that has taken place. Here's the and, and the judicial system and the court system that would be working at instructions and recommendations of the office of the commander-in-chief of the armed forces to turn people into guilty and convict people and to make people innocent in accordance with their loyalty and allegiance to the commander-in-chief that would not get our support and trust the he is hashimi is still the vice president he was in baghdad since he was a criminal and he was wanted then why did they leave him leave Baghdad? And why did they export that problem to Kurdistan region? And since, and since he talks about the Iraqi court system and the judicial, but he said, Maliki himself says that he has had the file for the last two years. Then why did he wait for two years and then to come up with this thing? And then later on, why does he send me a message so that we will help him sneak out of the country. Okay. So why, if he's a criminal, then why should he be given that opportunity to leave or sneak out? They wanted to show that everybody wants to respect rule of law, to respect the judicial system, and it's only us who are not respecting it. Now, in fact, as I said, still that meeting of the three presidencies had not taken place. The meeting of the three presidencies and the chairman of the Iraqi list should take place in order to make any decision. Whatever decision they will make, we will respect that. Whether they will uh, decide to, to arrest him, to have him leave the country. But not, we will not abide whatever thing comes out at the office of the commander in chief. And uh, now he is outside the country. If he comes back, he will make the decision if he stays out. But this is something that's not related to us in the region as much as it's related to the overall situation. As for the border incursions, in fact, we are we're sad about these things happening, but that also tells us, although it's happening at the border areas, the remote border areas, but also it tells us that this problem cannot be solved through military means. This problem can only be solved through peaceful means. Therefore, neither planes nor RPGs would help solving this problem. Mr. President, Zor Spas, Mindulum Khosha. Thank you very much. Thank all of you for your attendance. We look forward to hosting you here again. Thank you.